I am so excited that you're here today because I'll be showing you how I created this beautiful lime wash wall right behind me. If it's your first time here, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. And as usual, all the timestamps will be listed in the description. So this is my sister salon suite and we really wanted to add a natural warmth to this room. So doing a lime wash wall was absolutely perfect. Now, if you're not familiar with what lime wash paint is, it's a natural form of paint that actually creates this beautiful textured look on the wall. Now, when I say texture, it's actually more of a visual texture rather than a physical texture that you can touch like a plaster wall. And the best part about it is that it is super renter friendly. So this is the type of wall that you can paint and when you're tired of it, you can just paint right over it. So with that said, now I'm gonna jump into everything you'll be needing for this project. So the first thing you're gonna be needing is of course, lime wash paint. So you can go ahead and make it yourself or you can avoid the hassle and just buy it from a company that already has it. Now I purchased it from a company in California called JH Wall Paints. I really loved working with them because they honestly have just so many different colors that you can choose from. And as you're browsing the website, you'll also see that they have so many different examples of different rooms that have been done. And it also tells you exactly what they did to create that look. So if you're on the fence about a specific color, you know exactly what it's gonna look like before you purchase it. These paints are also high performance and just great quality overall. They are natural paint form, just like regular lime wash, which I loved. Overall, I would highly recommend them. There are some other companies that you can explore with as well. I know Baywork is another company, but I'm located in Miami, Florida, so choosing a company in the US was just a lot easier for me, and they really had so many beautiful options. Next, you're also gonna need a mineral primer, which I also purchased from JH Wall Paints, and I will share a lot more about what that is later on in the video. And then you'll also be needing a same blocking primer that you can get at any hardware store. And then for the brushes, I use a trimming brush, and then I also use a block brush. Now, I purchased my block brush, from JH Wall Paints, it is a great quality brush and it is absolutely essential for a lime wash wall. It's really what's gonna give you that beautiful texture of lime wash. And then you'll also need a paint roller, some water, plastic cups, a couple of paint trays, some paint stir sticks, painter's tape, and then the last thing you do not wanna forget is something to open up your paint containers with. They are a little bit hard to open up, so you'll definitely want a flathead or a metal paint opener. Now that's just about everything you'll be needing, so let's head into the video. Hey guys, so this is the wall that we're gonna be painting right behind me and the first thing we're gonna do is prime our walls. Okay, so this is the primer I'm gonna be using the first round that I'm priming the walls because we'll also be priming the walls with another product that I'll explain later. So we're just gonna get started with this, give it a nice quick coat and then we're gonna jump into the others. Now the primer we're using here is just a basic, inexpensive stain blocking primer. This is meant to cover pretty much any stains that you could have on a wall um, and pretty much anything that you wouldn't want to show through the paint. So in our case, since we did actually have to patch up some holes that were already present in the wall, it was super important that we use a stain blocking primer like this to make sure that none of our patchwork would end up showing through at any point at all. And after we've given that a quick and even coat, then we're going to let this dry for about 35 minutes and then we're going to jump into our mineral primer. Okay, so now it's time to add our mineral prime. And just a quick little disclaimer, the cap of this container is on super tight. So make sure you have some sort of flat head on hand so that you can easily open it up because I have to say it was a little challenging for us. So we're gonna start off by just lining all the edges of the wall, including all the outlets and just any corners that we won't be able to get later with the roller. This mineral primer creates a micro porous texture on the wall that allows the lime wash paint to sink in and adhere properly. So traditionally, lime wash paint goes on porous surfaces like plaster, stone, or brick. So this primer pretty much creates the porous surface that we need in order to apply lime wash paint to drywall, which is what we're working with today. And while I'm working on these edges, my sister and I are gonna tag team and she's gonna focus on painting the rest of the wall with the roller. To give you an idea, when you apply regular paint to a wall, the paint will typically just sit above the surface of the wall. When it comes to lime washing, the paint actually seeps into the surface, which is why this primer is so important. So moral of the story, you really need this primer if you plan to be lime washing drywall. And once the wall is fully covered, you wanna wait about six hours to make sure the wall is fully dry, or you can just let it dry overnight like we did. All right guys, so this is the wall behind me that we are about to lime wash. Now, as you know, we have already put a blocking primer on it as well as a mineral prime that is specifically recommended by the company to use before you use their lime wash paint. 
Now, as I mentioned, all the paints that we're using for the lime wash as well as the mineral prime are all from a JH wall paints. Now, the company recommends that you do two coats of the lime wash paint. And for the first coat, we're just going to go straight in with the paint. We're not going to water that down at all. I know a lot of people do that, but the company recommends that for the first wash that we only do the paint. And then for the second wash that we do add about 50% water. So it is a little bit more watered down. Now, both rounds, I'm going to be painting with this black brush that I had shown you earlier. So we went ahead and purchased two. My sister and I are both going to be doing this at the same time. We're just going a tag team and hope that this finishes the process a little bit faster all right guys so before we get started with our lime wash painting we're just going to line the rest of the wall to make sure that we don't get any of this lime wash paint on the ceiling or any of the surrounding white walls and that looks about good so now it's time to start working with our lime wash paint and like i said these containers are so hard to open i literally broke my nail this is not a joke and it hurts so much <laughs> so please make sure that you're being super careful when you open these up especially if you have long nails like me um and yes <laughs> So with that said, once you've got it open, you're going to want to give it a really good stir. And as you can tell, we completely forgot our paint stir sticks, but definitely make sure that you find something to stir it really well with before you pour it into anything. And as you pour it out to your paint tray, you'll see it has a really thick consistency, almost like kind of chalky, which is really interesting, but you'll see how it applies so nicely on the wall. So now it is officially time for the fun part. I'm going to jump right into the painting and I'm actually going to start with a regular trimming brush where I'm lining the edge of the wall and I'm going to use the same brush to brush all of the product out as far as it naturally goes. But while I'm doing this, I'm actually going to stroke the brush in a bit of an X pattern and this is really just to give a bit more of an organic look. The goal is to spread the paint out as far as it can go so that you can create that natural cloud effect. And from here, I'm going to follow the same process but leaving a little bit of space in between because eventually as we create more and more clouds all of our clouds will begin to connect giving you a beautiful gorgeous look on this wall and now to give you a quick little close-up of what I'm doing with the trimming I'm using the trimming brush first to apply the paint and I'm utilizing the same brush to start to pull some of that paint away from the trimming and as you can tell, I'm sort of doing this in that X pattern that I mentioned earlier, but it doesn't have to be exactly like this. You really just want to spread the paint out in all directions, just going back and forth with the brush. And then now I'm grabbing my black brush to give it more of that blended look that we're going for. You really want to avoid any sharp lines there on the edges because this will allow for a more cohesive look in the end. And as you can see, little by little, the clouds start to connect and eventually form a one big cloud. And to start painting the rest of the wall, I'm going to start forming clouds in other areas, but I am going to try to keep them somewhat close to the areas that I've already painted. And that's really because you want the paint on the wall to be still a little bit wet as you begin to start linking those clouds together. And at this point, you don't need to be using your trimming brush at all. You should only be using the black brush because this is what's going to be giving you that beautiful texture in the end. It doesn't really matter which way you stroke the brush. You can go across, um, a diagonal, really however you want to do it. But the point is that you are just constantly dragging that paint out as far as it can naturally go so that little by little you start to get that beautiful lime wash effect. And from here, we're just going to continue working our way to the right side of the wall, starting with the trimming and then little by little working our way down with a block brush. Honestly, what I love about lime wash paint is that it's so effortless and you really can't go wrong. Truthfully, if you are looking for a project that is going to make you feel like a modern day Picasso without um, messing up your project, this is definitely it. So definitely don't think about what you're doing too much. And honestly, just try to enjoy the process because this really is such a fun way to paint a wall. And here I just want to give you a closer look of what this looks like. So as you can tell, the paint is actually really, really thick. And you'll see how when we do the second coat, it's not going to be as thick. But you can start off with as much paint as you want on your brush. This is more or less what I did for each cloud. And then from here, I'm just going to jump right in and just swiping the paint across the wall. And if you notice, I am kind of in between two clouds. So I'm going to do my best to try to just push that paint out as much as I can. Like I said, I did not do this perfect at all. It all looks really messy right now, but you'll see how... Um, even some of those areas that you have holes in, those will be filled in later as well.
and we have finally reached the other side of this wall so i'm just finishing this trimming and at this point we have other clouds that we're going to eventually connect as well so that we can finish our wall As we did the trimmings, we just kind of used the trimming brush as well as the block brush to kind of just cover that area and just blend it in with everything else. And right here, I did want to show you just how we left it in some areas because we kind of felt like it would just end up giving the wall a little bit more dimension. And I think in the end, it really did. But this is what the wall ended up looking like in the end when we completely finished the first coat. As you can tell, the wall is definitely fully covered. There's just a couple of those really small areas that um, look like what I just showed you right now. So that's of course optional to you. Um, the goal is really to cover the whole thing. Um, we just kind of liked what it was doing. So we just went with it and it did give us a beautiful result in the end. So you can decide if that is what you would like to do as well. So now we're gonna go ahead and let this dry overnight and we will be back tomorrow. I know. <laughs> it looks really pretty already. I so much. I'm not gonna lie. I'm impressed. And here we are. As you can tell, the paint does look a whole lot lighter than it did when it was wet. You can tell that all those wet brush strokes that we were able to see yesterday have pretty much disappeared and it's a lot more flat and just cohesive. Um, there still is a little bit of dimension, but definitely the color and the texture does look a lot more solid. So now we are going to add some even more depth to this look with a second coat. So we just opened up our paint again and we're giving this a super good mix because it is super thick. So you want to make sure it's very well combined. And for this coat, we're going to want to do 50% water and 50% of the paint. So we put equal parts paint and water in each of these cups. And then we just poured our water into our paint and just give that a nice mix using our flathead. And as you can see here, we're kind of eyeballing it. But this is what our cups looked like before we mixed them. And I will tell you, we did end up doing this process about three times from the beginning to the end of the wall. So if you do have a bigger cup or like a larger bowl to work with, that might make it a little bit easier for you as well. But we also wanted to just do it little by little so we wouldn't end up making too much paint than we needed to. And then once that's nice and mixed, we're going to pour this out. And you can already tell the consistency is just so different. It's a lot more watery for sure. And here we are back at it working with our paint. And now we are going to follow the same exact process. But I will tell you that it is so much easier because now that this paint is a lot more watered down and thinned out, the paint just extends a lot farther out. And it just is super easy to use, even easier than the first coat. And I did want to show you guys just kind of what happens um, if you just leave the paint sitting there. It does start to kind of um, separate a little bit. So you'll just kind of want to give it a nice stir every once in a while before you dip your brush into it. And as you can tell with the water, it's a lot more watery. You can tell that the product just is just watery, honestly. When I first started with the second coat, I did use the trimming brush just like I did on the first round. But eventually I kind of realized that I didn't really need it because the paint was really nice and thin. I was pretty much able to use my block brush for the entire wall. And I really only pulled out the trimming brush again for small little tight corners and things like that. But for the most part, the block brush is just a lot bigger and just covers a lot more area a lot faster. So it was super handy. And if you notice, I am making sure that I'm covering every single part of this wall this time. I'm not leaving any of those small little holes open at all. What was also really helpful about this coat is that since I was able to move so fast, all of the paint kind of stayed wet the entire time. So whenever I was pulling paint from both clouds to combine it, the process was even more seamless and even easier. I do think that combination of using the thicker um, standard paint in the first coat and then using the more watered down paint in the second coat definitely makes a big difference in the overall appearance of the wall. And of course, the block brush, the block brush makes such a difference to the final texture of this wall. You know, actually brushing paint onto a wall the entire process versus using a roller just adds this beautiful texture to it from beginning to end and overall just really makes the wall come together. And as you can see here, how far this paint has just extended across the wall. I started all the way by the outlet and now it's all the way at the complete other side of the wall. Um, as you can see, you really don't end up using very much paint here on the second coat.
all right guys so this is the end of the second coat and as you can tell so much of it has already started to dry all of those darker spots are pretty much just areas that i decided to go back that i felt needed a little more love as you know when we were painting the first coat i did leave some of those little spots open with that said i felt like i needed to go back a little extra on some of those areas so we'll see what the end result looks like tomorrow and it is the next day and we are back and it already looks so beautiful as you can tell it has dried so much and as you look at it from different angles you can really see that texture honestly the camera doesn't even do it justice it is so beautiful in person so now all we have left is to remove our painters tape and here we are we absolutely love how this came out honestly the organic textured and just warm overall feeling that it gave to this room is just unmatched to any style of paint we will definitely be doing this again All right, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. We absolutely love how this wall came out. I can't even describe. Now, if you haven't yet, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as usual, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to comment down below. I love to connect with you guys and help you in any way. And that's all for today, guys. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.